Okay, let's testing this is one, two, three. One, two, three. Let's try it again. This is testing one, two, three. One, two, three. This is um, Rule of the Road 32 for foundation degree. The original course was uh, January 2009. Guys, what you need to do for this is you need to identify what is the uh, Rule of the Road, what is the vessel, what is the date, uh, what is the length, and is she actually making way. What is the day signal if you see the nighttime signal, and conversely, what is the nighttime signal if you see the day signal? What's the fog signal? What, fog, what is the fog signal, the rhythm of it, what's it sounded on, and what's the time interval? On the voyage, I've just put a couple of boys together. We'll name the boy, what is the top mark, the colour of the light, and the rhythm of the light. So, uh, you see it right ahead, what action would you take? And I'm sorry about the background noise, I hope that you can hear this okay. Here we go, this is the first vessel. This indicates my masthead light, and so I can see this vessel on the port side. You can see you can see that the lights, this is a powder vessel, and she's probably more than 50 meters in length. The side light indicates that she is underway. As a, there are three types of vessels that we know that we're making way. They are NUC, RAM, and fishing. All other vessels, we don't know whether they're making way or not. So she doesn't carry a day signal because it's the most common vessel that you'll see. Her fog signal has two options now. One is that if she's making way, it will be one prolonged blast on the ship's whistle in intervals not exceeding two minutes. But if she was stopped and not making way through the water, then it will be two prolonged blasts on the ship's whistle in intervals not exceeding two minutes. Okay, let's try another one. I hope you don't see this one right ahead. So here you can see that the vessel is 152 meters in length. Yeah, and it's head on. These are day signals. And it's three black balls in a vertical line. The distance between them no more, no less than uh, 1.5 meters. Uh, she is a vessel aground. A vessel aground. Daytime signal. Um, uh, the daytime is three black balls, but the nighttime signal would be two all-round red lights in place of the balls and anchor lights for her length. The forward all-round white light for the anchor light being higher than the after one. Her fog signal, well there's three black balls to remind us. It's three distinct strokes on the bell followed by rapid ringing of the bell for five seconds followed by three distinct strokes on the bell. As the vessel's more than 100, 100 meters long, then she would sound rapid ringing of the gong in the after part of the vessel immediately after. All these in uh, intervals not exceeding one minute. The rules also say that she might sound the appropriate sound signal, and in this case it might be uniform, uh, you are running into danger, that being too short and one long. Okay. Here we have uh, an all-round red over an all-round white. She is a vessel engaged in fishing other than trawling with nets extending horizontally uh, into the seaway. The nets do not exceed 150 meters. Um, the red side light indicates that she is one of those three vessels, NUC, REM or fishing, and if I see the side lights or the stern light, she's actually making way through the water. There's no indication of length for this vessel. The day signal would be two cones apex together, where it can best be seen. The fog signal, she is a hampered vessel, so she would sound one long followed by two short on the ship's whistle in intervals not exceeding two minutes. Here we have an oddball. It looks a bit strange. You don't see this too often. This is a sailing vessel and she's got an all-round red over green. The white light would indicate that it's the stern light and so we're actually coming up on the stern of her. I don't know the length um, because this is indeterminate from uh, the signals that you can see. She neither carries a daytime signal either other than the sails which are clearly seen. 
Her fog signal would be she is also hampered, so it would be one long followed by two short on a ship's whistle in intervals not exceeding two minutes. OK, let's move on. Here we have a vessel not under command, so due to exceptional circumstances she's unable to keep out of the way. She denotes this by two all-round red lights at night, and because I can see the side light, I know that she's actually making way through the water. Her day signal would be two black balls in place of the all-round red lights. Her fog signal, she's hampered. She would sound one long followed by two short on the ship's whistle in intervals not exceeding two minutes. Here, what do we have? That's four white lights in a vertical line. This is a tug and tow. Let me try and explain. Uh, so she's got four white lights in a vertical line and the red, white, red. So the top white light would indicate that she is a vessel, a power-driven vessel. Two white lights in a vertical line is that she's a power-driven vessel engaged in towing or pushing. Three white lights says that she is actually towing and the length of tow exceeds 200 meters. She has a fourth white light to indicate that this tug is probably more than 50 meters in length. The length of tow is measured from the stern of the tug to the end of the tow. She's severely hampered by the tow, showing the red, white, red. The green and red indicate that I'm seeing her bow on her aspect. The daytime signal, because the tow is more than 200 meters, then she would carry a diamond on the tug and she would carry a diamond on each of the vessels being towed if it was more than one. Hampered by the tow indicates a ball diamond ball for the RAM. Fog signal. She would sound one prolonged blast followed by two short blasts on a ship's whistle in intervals not exceeding two minutes as she's hampered. But if any of the tow was manned, the last vessel that is manned would sound one long and three short immediately after. So, bit of a Christmas tree. Let's have a look at some buoys. Here I've indicated what's the compass, which way is north. We're heading northeast. We see a yellow and black, so it is a cardinal buoy. Which one? Well, we know that the the top mark points to the black and so here we would have two cones apex down. The colour of the light would be white and the rhythm of the light would be six plus one long. That can be either very quick six plus one long in ten seconds or quick flash six plus one long in fifteen seconds. We're heading in a northeasterly direction and we see a south cardinal mark which says that the safe water is to the south and the danger is to the north. We would alter course to starboard and pass south of the buoy and as we came past then we would be looking for the east cardinal buoy. Whoops, there we go. This one is another cardinal buoy, yellow and black and variations. This one is the West Cardinal Boy. So the cones are pointing towards the black. So it will be two cones apex together. Um, she's on the westerly side, so the clock system says that it would be a white light and flashing nine. Quick flash nine every 15 seconds, or very quick flash nine every 10 seconds. In this case, we're again, we're heading northeast and we see the Western Cardinal Boy. It's the danger is over here and so the safe water is to the west. So we would alter course to port and look for the North Cardinal Mark. This is one of the miscellaneous boys. So she is uh, black and red striped, uh, hooped uh, to that matter. She is an isolated danger. The top mark are two black uh, spheres to indicate the safe water all the way around. The danger is directly below this and we need to pass it with, uh, they were saying at least 500, uh, 500 meters. The color of the light is white and the rhythm, as she's got two balls, is a group flash two. 
I've tried to show here that we see this fine on the starboard side and so we would stay to the starboard side of the channel as it says in rule 9 so we would alter course to starboard and leave it on our port side so if there was anything coming from the opposite side then they also would alter course to starboard if this uh, boy was um, not anticipated if it wasn't already on the passage plan then and it was un unexpected then we would stop and take all way off and do a chart assessment but in this case what we're looking for is to identify which is the boy and to pass which side in this case alter course to starboard and pass it on the port side okay that ends the stories guys i hope you've enjoyed this if you want put the money in the box thanks a lot bye